And if you don't have free speech, you don't think. If you don't have debate, you don't think. If you just have fist fights, you know what that says? You're not thinking. And they, they love that. I mean, listen, go back to all the regimes in the past. They have always used these things to concentrate power. And power has not concentrated. And I'll be honest with you, I'm a constitutional lawyer of over 40 years. I've sued in and out of Washington, D.C. And this is the most, one of the most frightening aspects I've ever seen about our republic, what's happening. This is Donegan Kaiser, founder of Liberty and Finance. I'm now a licensed gold and silver dealer with Miles Franklin. Call me directly for the physical gold and silver that you need at the best price with personalized, private service from one of the oldest and best respected companies in the business. 30 years strong, A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau, zero complaints, licensed and bonded, insured delivery or vault storage or IRAs, excellent prices, privacy and confidentiality, pay by check, money order, ACH or wire, satisfaction guaranteed. Call me directly at 419-819-9209 or my associate at 310-562-6400 or email us at kaiser at milesfranklin.com. Welcome back to Liberty and Finance. We have a returning guest. John Whitehead is the founder of the Rutherford Institute. He is a constitutional attorney and he's joining us this Thursday, January 14th, 2020. John, thanks for coming back on Liberty and Finance. Hey, thanks for having me on the show. When we've had you on in the past, you've talked about the risk and the specter of martial law, uh, clampdown, government overreach, a loss of privacy, all kinds of different topics you've fielded with us. It seems like we're suddenly on a conveyor belt that's moving us in fast forward through many of the things that we've talked about. People are gravely concerned about what will next week, next month, next year, the rest of our lives look like. Do we even have the Constitution anymore? If we don't, what I mean, what document are we going by if, we're, if that's not our playbook anymore? So if we could maybe take a few of these uh, that are near and dear to people's hearts right now, um, without getting all bogged down in the, in the minutia of every news event that's been flashed past our eyes, if we could try to keep kind of the, the perspective of the broad picture that we need to be aware of. Uh, but first, if you could maybe look at the next perhaps month or so, and um, give us any particular things you feel like we need to be aware of and prepared for or watching in the next weeks and months just to get through this immediate period of time before we talk about what is this telling us in the big picture. Well, first of all, let me say this. Uh, James Madison, who wrote our Bill of Rights, said, and this, I always say this is the basic principle of anybody that calls themselves a patriot, we ought to mistrust all those in power. And so you have to be very, very careful how things are being played out, how they're being played out in the news media. When you see the uh, tech giants now basically saying, when we want to do away with free speech, we're going to do away with it. And they're teaching a younger generation, by the way, that, you know, you say the wrong words, you do this, you're going, you're not going to be able to talk to your friends. And you have a, we have a uh, generation now that's totally hooked on screen devices. So, what they're saying, the tech giants, is is that uh, they're in total control. And what most people don't realize was Amazon, IBM, Google have contracts with the NSA, CIA to work with their intelligence clouds to develop them. They have access to all that information on the intelligence cloud by the CIA, the NSA, the FBI. We do not. So we, the people, don't run the government. If you think that, then you're just very, very silly. Uh, I mean, all I have to do is look do basic research to see that if uh, you have the corporations completely fusing with the government, what do we have? There was a fellow named Mussolini back in Italy. You, if you read history, some people may remember his name. Mm -hmm. He uh, liked the idea of corporatism. He pushed it. The corporations fusing with the government to control society, but also to make a lot of money for the people in power. Um, people don't realize this. There was a press conference in Germany before Hitler was actually emerged as the official leader, uh, was the large corporations met with Hitler. And this is an actual quote, the chief, uh, forget his actual name, but he actually stepped out one of the big corporate giants and, and they asked him what was the result of their meeting. He said, we hired Hitler. That's the actual quote. 
So what we're seeing is something that's very, very dangerous. Uh, what we think is the public realm and all that is now consumed by the private realm. And that's what we have to really be concerned about, in my opinion. And we're really seeing it's in your face right now. I mean, if you say the wrong word, I mean, I know people like Ron Paul, David Icke, people out there that have been taken off. It's because they disagree with the official story. And that what so what does that say? The tech giants are converged with the government and they really are, by the way. So uh, that's one thing that's really developed here. And if it doesn't wake you up to that, then you, you then you might as well go back to sleep. And, you know, the average American watches 150 hours of television a month, screen devices, and they're consumed by it. And we've become addicted. And what's happened, to be honest with you, technology used to be an extension of us. Now we're becoming an extension of technology with the singularity coming down the, the pike by Google saying they're going to fuse the human mind with the with uh, the Internet by 2029. You know, it's, it's already here, by the way, I think. You have... Uh, Elon Musk with his Neuralink, the chip that goes into the head and actually fuses you with your computer and the Internet. Folks, they're going to be shooting things into your head and you're not going to know whether what's real or not. If you haven't seen the movie Matrix, may I suggest it to you? That's basically where we're headed. And uh, what uh, people are doing is the people that think they're rebels and stuff, they're playing right into the hands of those who have power. They love division. They love strife. That's how they can take over. They can declare the emergency state. I mean, the National Mall is now being shut down for the inauguration. What used to be an event where people went, listened, talked, debated, is now basically being shut down. Is that what we really wanted? Because you're going to get the president anyway, you know, the guy, they, the, whoever they chose. And that's exactly where we're at. So, that's kind of an overview, I think, again, general, that people need to realize is that uh, you, we're going to have to start a, a, what I would call a peaceful resistance in some way. Uh, I'm uh, advocating now an electronic uh, bill of rights. We need to be protected against people shutting us down immediately without any appeal. They just, bloop, you're gone. I mean, that's tyranny. That's all you can call it. And that's what we're seeing today. And uh if Americans don't wake up now and you go back to your screen devices and what they're doing, they're taking away free speech. Listen, free speech is the basis of a liberty. Well, let me explain that to you real quick. Open free speech. I mean, it's good to have someone look you in the face and challenge you. Why? Makes you think. Okay, if you don't have free speech, you don't think. If you don't have debate, you don't think. If you just have fist fights, you know what that says? You're not thinking. And they, they love that. I mean, listen, go back to all the regimes in the past. They have always used these things to concentrate power. And power has not concentrated. And I'll be honest with you. I'm a constitutional lawyer of over 40 years. I've sued in and out of Washington, D.C. And this is the most, one of the most frightening aspects I've ever seen about our republic, what's happening. And people are in their homes with lockdowns. And uh, the whole idea of whether we have private property anymore is a real question. I mean, and listen, here's another thing. This is going worldwide. I mean, worldwide, this is happening. I mean, Google admits they work with the Chinese in developing their systems, social credit stores, where people, uh, if you say the wrong word, do the wrong thing, can't fly, can't move around, can't visit restaurants. And uh, people are putting up with it over there. OK, so are we going to put up with it in America? And uh, it's I would say it's a monster in the making. The monster's already there. The question is, and we, we what we call the deep state, by the way, the deep state runs the show. The FBI actually got outed with a memo they did on the deep state. It was leaked. They called it the seventh floor group, the deep state. But if you look at it carefully, it's all the corporations merging with the 585 billionaires that uh, the SMU professors and Northwestern University professors who did the concentration of wealth in the United States found out that we're run by 585 billionaires who run everything. And if you look at who's made all the money, Jeff Bezos, the richest man in the world, uh, Gates, Zuckerberg, you go down the line of the 12 top Millionaires in this country, the richest men have made tons of money during all this COVID stuff. So listen, if that doesn't raise some real questions in your head, then I, I, I say go take another pill and go back to sleep.
Well, you've got about a dozen major, really earth-shaking uh, topics there that all are worthy of our inspection. We're only going to be able to touch on the, uh, them at, the, at this level. But let's talk first about free speech. Since you said free speech is the basis of freedom, and you talked about uh, deplatforming, silencing, uh, disconnect, unplug, cancel culture. So there's there's some major aspects to that. Uh, we, for example, people, if you we keep pushing this message of trying to understand what's going on and, and have this open discussion about this, we've seen many of our colleagues in independent media be canceled off of their platforms on some of the major big tech platforms. So they've retreated to what are considered free speech variants of those platforms. And now those applications themselves are getting canceled off of by, by big tech from the application stores or from their hosting services or whatever. So, But for now, we have an alternative. At least, folks, if you're watching us on YouTube, please start watching us on Rumble or Brighteon. We're uploading to both of those. Also, you've got to go to our libertyandfinance.com homepage and over on the left-hand side, make sure you sign up for our free email mailing list so we can stay in touch with you, depending what happens to us. Go to Rutherford.org and sign up to get our, uh, I mean, these are all articles that uh, we write here, and uh, they're fully footnoted by credible sources, so I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Uh, I, you don't have to be a conspiracy theorist today, because it's all standing there in front of us, folks. So let's let's touch on that point about free freedom of speech. Uh, what do you think uh, people can do? You said you've, you've got some suggestions on what we need, this electronic bill of rights, or what do you think that people need to do now to make sure that we don't become completely silenced? It's going to be very, very difficult. You're going to have to create your own uh, sources. We're going to have to force Congress to pass an electronic privacy bill of rights, by the way, which will deny these companies the right to cancel you immediately. You should have an immediate appeal uh, and the government should get involved in that, the so-called government, because the government is we the people. The government's there to protect us against this kind of tyranny. So we're advocating that right now. I think that um, if, you know, the people like Zuckerberg who run Facebook and stuff, they hide out. It's difficult to get any kind of contact with them. They're, we, nobody knows where they're hiding. And um, But I think that, uh, I think, number one, continue to speak out. Um discourage violent acts they don't work. John Lennon said it best, the former Beatle, when he was advocating free speech and all that. But he said, what the government wants to do this, they want to tweak you on the beard, punch you in the chest, get you violent, and then they take control. And that's exactly what we're seeing today. And uh, nonviolent protests work. I mean, the people like Martin Luther King showed it works uh, very effectively. Uh, and if it works effectively, who knows what the government will do. But the other thing I think we have to be cognizant of is that uh, the government, the NSA, the FBI, and all those groups uh, watch out because they do. They have a. They they have. There's a history of them infiltrating groups across the country, and back in the early days, I mean, people didn't realize that some of the hippies were gathering for protests, and they all had their long hair and were smoking joints. Well, some of the people that had long hair and smoking joints with them were FBI agents. Uh, they had been infiltrated. Uh, and they were pushed to do things they shouldn't have done. So I would say be very, very careful who, who's uh, guiding you and advising you. And like I say, Dunnigan Kaiser, go to your network, go to Rutherford.org, uh, get the real information there. Because education precedes action. Most people are not educated on any of this stuff. They don't know how to articulate it. But here's the other thing I want to make sure people understand. The government's not helpless. They may, they may have looked silly during this capital, so-called capital riot. But listen, they have the arms, whatever. They're ready, folks. They can shut the country down in 48 hours across the country. I mean, they have the uh, real-time crime centers, the fusion centers across the country are watching everything people are doing. I mean, people don't realize that all the stuff that they've got going, the FBI is located in, in some police headquarters. They work with local police. Uh, I mean, the uh, government has already built a simulated city in Fort Benning, Georgia, where they're training now. The military is training against uh, civilian protests. I mean, they're going to be – if they're not ready already, and I think they are, they're definitely going to be ready soon. So uh, you're not going to win with violence. Violence is how it always – and be careful, you know, except I don't follow leaders. Uh, that's the other thing I will suggest to people. Uh, 
most people that put in front of you by the uh, so-called government, if you want to call it that, we are the government, by the way. People that the, the people in Washington are supposed to represent us. Uh, be very, very careful about because you know their lips move, but the question is who's behind them. Who again? The deep state, the shadow government, we now know exists. The FBI admitted it, and. So who's really running the show most of the time, and what do they want? And I know what they want. They want your money, and they want control. And, again, don't let them jerk your beard and poke you in the chest. They may get you to do stupid things because it always works the wrong way. And the media, by the way, uh, you got to be very careful with the media. What you hear on the media, don't repeat it as if it was always true. Remember Carl Bernstein in the late 1970s wrote that really good article. He was this Bernstein Woodward, the great journalist. He uh, in, got into the New York Times and places like that, the networks, and realized he said it blew his mind. The CIA and the NSA and groups like that were working with the big the, the networks and the newspapers, vetting articles and stuff. That's a fact. So we're in a really strange conundrum right now. I, I would say one that's very difficult to discern the truth. And the only way you're going to be able to discern the truth is go to good sources, get your information. And I know, I know this, by the way. I've seen some local governments now that are getting fed up with this stuff, and they're saying, no, we're not going to do this or do that. We're not going to do the SWAT team raids, 80000 annually in America. Stuff like that, great stuff. That's the way to move. Move locally under the 10th Amendment. And most people don't know the Bill of Rights. Read the Bill of Rights. Tenth Amendment says that local governments can nullify actions of the federal government. We're not going to do this. We're not going to put up with your controls anymore. And um, But the, I'll be honest with you. The tech giants are so powerful, and they've wormed themselves into the younger generation so thoroughly, it's going to be difficult. And we're going to see more and more people programmed to say, oh, I shouldn't say that word. I'll get in trouble and what happens? Free speech dies. Your brain dies. You're gone. Yeah, that's one of the most insidious aspects of this uh, self-censoring that you're talking about there is that we really do th uh, often think in words. And if you and words matter and they, they form thought, they, they allow you to trans trans to share thoughts uh, with others. And if we start uh, habitually self-censoring, uh, ourselves just to be able to stay viable so that we don't get shut down. Um, and even in gatherings, the encroachment goes beyond those who are on a platform like this uh, in media to people in workplaces have been uh, have to hush their voices when they're talking about things. Uh, and now we've got these smart speakers in many environments as well as your cell phone. So people are concerned about where are they, where are you not, uh, where do you have the freedom to to say to speak your mind? to really um, voice your opinion, even with those you, you're, you're immediately uh, surrounded with, and even if you're not on the public platform. Hey, we've gone beyond George Orwell's 1984, where he thought screen devices would be the only thing listening. Listen, Alexa, the speakers, the FBI admits they can turn your phone on from a distance, even when it's off, it becomes a listening device. They can turn the camera on your laptop, etc. go down the line. We live in a total surveillance state now, wherever you go. With, um, you know, the way they're doing with uh, the, the vid all the video surveillance systems now, they now coordinate in what's called video analytics. And, I mean, wherever you're walking today or wherever you're going, they can, there he is, there he is, and they can point to you. And Elon Musk has said it best. I mean, he says the robotics has taken over, folks. He says, I've been telling people this, but listen, he said, they're not going to realize it until the robots are walking down the street toward them. And that's coming, too. I mean, we're facing a really difficult, difficult future ahead. And I'm telling people, if you care about your children, the future, you know, you should get, again, get active in your local government. I'm telling people, you say you want to watch all your screen devices, give, a, give Liberty one-third of that time you spend on screen device. 30, 40 hours a month, a week. Get, get active in your government. Uh, because, well, how's the Constitution start? We, the people of the United States, do ordain this. Da, da, da. We're the government. And because, well, the things we see, you can't point out and say it's his fault. If you're sitting on your butt watching the screen device, it's your fault because you're not doing anything about it. And listen, voting is the least thing you can do, by the way. I mean, listen, think about this country, 350 million people plus. And when you go to vote for a president, you have A or B. 
when I go to the store to buy <laughs> cold medicine, I have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Okay? Why am I stuck with this this ugly dude and that ugly dude? You know, that's basically it. People with, they're not very intelligent people. Okay? So, uh, we're, you're being manipulated when you think, oh, I voted for what's his name and now I've done my duty. Voting is the least thing you can do. Get on your feet and get up. And study the, the writings of people, like I say, Martin Luther King, uh, my book, Battlefield America, I go into some things that people can do uh, to get this thing going. But with this tech giant thing right now, we're facing a, a, an it, you know, not a them. It's an it that's very, going to be very tough with artificial intelligence now basically taking over our lives. I'm just telling people to watch out. It may be time some, in the future to push the button and turn them on. Something you just mentioned a couple times in passing here is this silent or invisible decision maker. Uh, there's, a, there's an old saying that if you want to know who's in charge, uh, find out who you can't criticize. And it just came out uh, about a couple weeks ago when uh, Donald Trump had his Twitter account uh, permanently revoked. And, and the question that can occur to people is, who? Who, if this is the president of the United States, we used to have the, the rather trite saying, the most, most powerful man in the free world or whatever, who made the decision? So who's making the decision to silence the president of the United States um, and revoke his speaking privileges, that sort of thing? And then now you're saying it isn't going to be a who, it's going to be a what in the case of artificially intelligent algorithms or whatever in the future. Can you talk to yeah. us a little bit about these invisible overlords of which then our, our representatives just become middle management, you know, underneath them. Listen, the money, money runs the show in Washington, DC. It's uh, again, that was that important study done by Northwest university and uh, Princeton university show. Again, we were ruled by 585 billionaires. That's the it out there. They're together. And uh, what they, they see a younger generation coming up. How do you, how do you mold a younger generation into thinking Wait a second. Into non-thinking. Uh, you limit what they can hear. You limit what they can say. And uh, you control them that way. So that, that's, that's basically what we're seeing now. And uh, they want to control the younger generation. When you have kids today that in their schools have a list of words they can't say. You know, one of them is guns, for example. You can't say guns. You can't In some schools, you can't say God. You go down the list. What in the world... Are they going to, when they go out in the world, how they, when they start to say, see something in their mouth, they go, uh-oh, they're going to put their head down and walk forward like in George Orwell's 1984. So the thought police are here. And here's the other thing that people have to understand. There was a 2018 study by SMU University that studied the development of psychopathology across the United States. Where did it congregate? congregate? The overwhelming conclusion by the professors was... Washington, D.C. Boy, I do I know that. Again, I've sued in and out of Washington, D.C. For, for over 40 years. It's the most corrupt place in the world. I wouldn't even want to live there. You know, uh, It's run by psychopaths who are very charismatic. They love power. They love money. They love control. Uh, they can do neat meetings, and people love them. And then they walk into the room and start counting their money. Uh, and that's what you have. The average congressman in Washington, D.C. spent three, three days a week in phone banks raising money. And that's what it's all about. It's about money. I mean, think about these people that go into politics. They come from humble backgrounds. And before you know it, whoa, dudes, <laughs> they got ships, private airplanes. And all. Where did all that come from? And you see it in local governments, too, by the way. I, I'm always surprised sometimes. I see some local governments. They won't do anything. And I start checking their backgrounds. And. I mean, the corporate, the big corporate entities come in and treat them to dinner, fly them to little vacations and stuff, and they control them. And part of this, by the way, I'll say this is in and the human DNA is really susceptible to all this. And I've talked to people who are uh, doctors and uh, PhDs in DNA, and they say you can alter your DNA, you can resist it. And the only way we're going to be able to resist what we're seeing today again is free speech, pushing people debating them, not hitting them. And here's the thing about free speech. Free speech, the First Amendment, acts as a steam valve. It lets people blow off their steams, talk, challenge one another, 
and then go home and think about it some more and maybe go out again. If you block that steam valve, you're going to get violent acts. People go underground and get violent because they have no other way. And so what I'm seeing today with the corporate giants and stuff, they're going to egg on a group of people who are going to go underground and plan violent actions. Let them speak, man. I mean, the president of the United States, let him speak. You know, whoever out there, all these other people, let them speak. So at least I want to hear what they have to say. I may disagree with it, but that disagreement makes me go, well, maybe do, uh, is my position correct? You know, mm -hmm. is the position that they're giving me on the news correct? Or should I challenge what people are telling me? You talked a few minutes ago about the co-option of the, basically the complicit in entrainment of our next generation so our children grandchildren they're getting pulled they're being ring raised steeped in this we attended the ron paul institute peace and prosperity conference in washington dc which was really eye-opening and there uh, ron paul talked about as the government pursues he was giving an example of these incessant uh, foreign wars and bases all over the world they'll always no matter what they want to do they'll always wrap it in the flag to give you this feeling, well, I should support it because that's patriotic and I want to be patriotic because I love my, my country or whatever. And so there, yeah. there's that transference, that psychological transference of love of country uh, to now you have to approve these actions. I noticed that also happened when you had the uh, various wars in the Middle East and they said, you know, uh, support, the, support the troops, support the troops, we support our troops. It's like, well, of course we support our troops, they're individuals, they're our, our children, they're our, our neighbor's children. But that doesn't mean that this mission that they were sent on is in, a, in our best interest or necessary or that sort of thing. But when you talked about then transferring this to the entire population of now they wrap virtuous signaling around, yeah, you should surrender your, your free speech. Yeah, you should. And, and we should. Yes, we should agree to that. Yeah, it's a good thing. You should stay home, stay safe, stay home, see something, say something, um, basically complying with all these new uh, directions that this is heading always encroachment 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 on our on our constitutional freedoms we interviewed alex newman from the new american he talks about this as weaponizing our empathy against ourselves so basically thinking, oh i must be i must be in, in unpatriotic or i must be a hater or something if i if i just want to live in the country that this country was supposed to be was founded to be well listen you're talking i'm a former infantry infantry officer i didn't get involved in the military, uh, what I did at the time, to fight for a flag. I fought for freedom in America. And these foreign wars I see were, were listen, almost 100,000 bombs were dropped by Donald Trump during his presidency. How many of those were dropped on kids, women, and children over in the Middle East? Uh, we know that that happens. There are many stories about all those things. Do is that something you want to wrap in the flag or do you want to get this thing under control? Because they make so much money off of the bombs and stuff. Again, it goes back, go back to the source of the thing. If you're dealing with psychopaths, they'll kill anybody to move forward. That's why you have to be very, very careful with what we're seeing in the military today and all the bomb droppings and urging for war. And again, it's the same thing, nation versus nation. Then you start, Oh, I hate them now. I hate whatever country we're fighting. And, then they make a peace deal, and the presidents go over and they hug each other and they're pals again. And what, what, who got all, all the people that got killed in between? I mean, think about this. The American military has killed over 22 million people since World War II, worldwide, with bombs and military actions. What would some of the great religious figures of the day think of things like that, that advocated for peace and love and things like that? Do we want to be dropping bombs like that, killing 22 million people? Those are the actual figures, folks. Is that something you'll mean? Again, uh, I support freedom, the freedom of people to move, the freedom of people not to salute a flag if they don't want to salute a flag or whatever they want to do, you know. Again, that's the basis of America. But listen, I don't identify with the bomb dropping either. I don't like it. I think it, we need to get this military-industrial complex under control. And who warned us? Dwight Eisenhower warned us that it would destroy our democracy and tear our economy apart, tear this country apart, and we would lose control of our government. I think that's already happened, folks. And we go back, am I going to fight for a flag or am I going to fight for the truth? Am I going to fight for what James Madison said? We ought to mistrust all those in power. That's the duty of a patriot. 
don't trust somebody who says, I'm going to go bomb today, and you go, oh, okay, that's American, just because the flag's being waved? You're silly. Now, you've also mentioned several times about the mind control that could be coming with, you know, mind, uh, brain, internet interface technology, all that sort of stuff. But don't we already have that with the amount of uh, filtering and selective uh, positioning of information in front of us? If you if you go search in any of the major search uh, tools for a particular topic, you're going to be presented with a particular viewpoint on that topic. If you uh, do that search, then from then on, you're going to be presented with stories that are tailored for you. And it's all for your convenience, of course, but are we, each of us, already living in a little bubble uh, that's being presented to us as far as the information we're allowed to see? Yes, we are, because here's the point. And again, this, uh, this is after my many years, over 30 books I've written and studied this, this topic. The government, when they start saying, in the future, we will be implementing this, like 2030 or whatever, whenever the, the 2030 seems to be the magic date for everything now, uh, it's already happened. They only tell you when it's already in place and moving forward. AI has already taken over many, many things on the Internet and phone, whatever you go today, AI. And when you have virtual reality now becoming even more invasive into our lives, I mean, when you have kids now going to be moving more toward virtual education, even in college, Bill Gates warned us. (laughs) When he said it, I went, oh, he said, what do you need schools for? When you have virtual education, I went, oh, you want virtual education. Why? Well, who will be teaching us? Do we really want a robot teaching us? And that's the other thing we've lost. We're human beings. Let's be human. We're not, again, I always say there's no races or anything. We're all human beings. Quit falling for all this divisiveness like race and money and power. We're all all human beings or we're saluting the flag or not. Let's treat each other with love. And we can disagree, but that doesn't mean we have to bang somebody on the head. And listen, that's the worst thing the government. If we got everybody got peaceful and peaceful marches around the Capitol with huge throngs, and we're going to put you down, you know, eventually, you can say that very, very clearly, they'd be frightened. But no, when you act like crazy people, they use that against you every time and get violent. How do, how do we avoid this uh, potential for pitfall of a false flag? Let's just imagine that you you would have a massive crowd doing a peaceful march and and, and speaking their peace, but keeping it one hundred percent peaceful. How do you how do you overcome the vulnerability of that of that situation to somebody who wanted to have it go wrong so that they could capitalize on a crisis and overreach with power, implanting bad actors within that crowd who would take actions that the crowd wasn't there to do. How does how do you stand against that as, as a free people? It'd be very, very difficult. That's what I'm saying. It's very, very difficult these days. Uh, I'm just being honest with, with you on that. Uh, listen, I've had uh, former NSA agents talk to me about the infiltration techniques. So uh, it's there. They do infiltrate groups. You have to be very, very careful. And you have to listen to people that are well, – either phobini or whatever, and uh, be very, very careful. That's all I'd say. And be sure you're in control. Whoever's in control of your group is pushing the, the, the agenda that will get it done. And the First Amendment says you have a right to peacefully assemble and petition the government for a redress of grievances. And as long as you do that, we can make some – and listen, it's, nothing's going to happen overnight the way things are going. We're too far down the pipe. When you have, the, like I say, the tech giants now have taken over, Basically, artificial intelligence has taken over. The government's working with them. It's going to be very difficult, folks. I just say get educated, and education will, have, will help you to take the right action. How about we've talked with Alex Newman? I mentioned about he talks about uh, people not only who have urban flight, people leaving the cities, but they have uh, school flight where people are leaving and deciding they're going to homeschool their children. Is that an alternative as long as they don't just go back and use the screen based <laughs> government provided <laughs> curriculum? I think those are alternatives, yeah. I think home education is a good idea. Uh, I would, uh, I don't watch television. <laughs> And the reason I don't is I don't need to watch television. <laughs> I got work to do. But the other thing, even when I'm relaxing, uh, I mean, I read books, do this, I get educated, I go back and read 1984 again, I read 
all these classics, Philip K. Dick, people like that, who were trying to say, it's coming, it's coming, and no one listened. Get educated and educate your children the Bill of Rights. I mean, the average mm-hmm. human being today, in America today, I ask lawyers, give me the five freedoms of the First Amendment. They'll go, <clears throat> well, they'll maybe miss free speech or something like that. I'd go, what's happened to the education system? So home education is a good way to go. Teach them the Bill of Rights. What did Orwell You can't become conscious until you rebel. That's an Orwell quote. And what he was saying, that's Eric Blair was his real name. What he was saying was, until you decide to listen and fight and say, I'm, going, I'm not going to listen to the agenda they're giving me, you can become conscious and you can think on your own. The same thing that Madison said, we ought to mistrust all those in power. John, you've mentioned your website a couple of times. Would you please give it to us again so that people can find you on the web? Yeah, it's rutherford.org, rutherford.org. Join up and uh, get our – we do a weekly commentary. We're on, you know, get, sign up to get uh, our, you know, messages we send out. We're involved in a lot of constitutional cases, our press releases, read and see what's going on in the courts. That's very, very important too. And are there any – uh, sources that you can point people to. You mentioned a couple of books or a couple of writers, but if there was if there was one book or two that that you thought people should really avail themselves of, what would you suggest? Well, my book Battlefield America, it's already come true. It was written several years ago. I mean, a publisher called me and said it's come true. Uh, that's got a lot of good. I mentioned all the sci-fi writers and stuff like that. Orwell's 1984. Read it. It's come true, folks. Uh, and that, that's, that's that would be the one. I would Orwell's book was. Uh, prophetic to say the word. I just thought of one more thing I meant to ask you about, and you talked about this has become a global phenomenon. For the last decade, people have been talking at conferences we've attended saying, oh, you've got to get an alternative passport so you can go away to this island or that that nation or South America or wherever, and that's where you're going to find uh, more more freedom than what you have in a overreaching society. But with this big tech companies being the way that people are able to communicate, and now they've got travel restrictions if you don't have the right vaccine or whatever, you're not going to be able to travel. What do you think people need to be aware of as far as the, the, the benefit or lack thereof of relocating? NSA has their Five Eyes program. They have bases all over the world. They've completely circled the globe, the NSA. NSA works with Google. Wherever you're at, if they want to get you, they'll come get you. So I would say if you, if you like your country, if you want to make America a better place, stay in this country and make it a better place. Get educated. And take some action, folks. Action that will work. And again, uh, channels like this, Rutherford.org, will give you the information to move forward. John Whitehead, founder of Rutherford.org, thank you for joining us again on Liberty and Finance. Thank you, sir. If you've decided that now is the right time for you to protect your family's financial future by acquiring physical precious metals, gold and silver, I'm delighted to let you know that I have now become a licensed dealer's representative for Miles Franklin, one of the oldest and most trusted names in bullion dealerships. And we can provide you with physical delivery to your personal possession or to professional fault storage or precious metals IRAs. Just email me at libertyandfinance at protonmail.com and please include your name and phone number in your email to libertyandfinance at protonmail.com. We'll get right back with you and find out how to best meet your needs so that you can either begin or increase your acquisition of physical precious metals now and protect your family's future starting today. To acquire gold and silver, just go to libertyandfinance.com. When the main site comes up, click on Bullion Sales. That's libertyandfinance.com, Bullion Sales. You'll see my name, Donegan Kaiser, my phone number, and my associate, Kaiser Johnson, his phone number, our email, libertyandfinance at protonmail.com. 